Welcome to our new podcast booth. What's up? <laughs> we, this is cool. This, this is, is cool. cool. I like the vibe. It's uh, yeah. it's nice and cozy in here. It is. It feels good. They surprised us today. Yes. With a, a brand new booth. They because uh, like it was like a stupid <laughs> office. It was. Horrible. Yeah. Go check out the last couple podcasts and, <laughs> and y'all see all the junk that was in here. And if you watch it on YouTube, it's it's officially a podcast. Booth We're just now, missing right? a couple bourbon bottles. That's, That's right. It. We got to get some alcohol. We're just gonna scratch. The yeah. TV yeah. We're just now. rolling. Yeah, we got to go. Just going with it. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'm glad to be back. It's yes. been we we haven't been. How long has it been? <laughs> I don't know. One Let's, one month. I just looked. One it's month. Been a month. It's yeah. probably close to two though. Boy, so it says one month. So R- probably one and a three quarters. Right. <laughs> it's probably rolling up on yeah, two months. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm but, slacking over here. But like, look sorry how, about that. Look how comfortable we are. Oh man. Know, and this you is can, nice. Yeah. Uh, and you can't yeah. see it in in the camera here, but we've got uh, what what do you call it? A bar. Yeah. We do have a bar basically. Yeah. Um. Man, I'm just so excited. So when we have guests in here, we can offer them a drink, yeah. and we can um, got some extra back, chairs, relax. Got, got some non-alcoholic spot. beer for Brad. Yeah, Brad. Yeah. yeah, Brad is not drinking right now, which is kind of a big deal. It's been a huge yeah. deal. You like your alcohol, like Love like it. any good man does. Yeah, but you really like your alcohol. I do. And why aren't you and drinking? It's, it's been a minute. Why don't you tell us about it? Yeah. Why aren't you yeah. Drinking? So. Courtney, my wife, was the one that actually had the idea. And she, wait, wait, wait well, you told me she wasn't even doing it. She she hasn't. She kind of gave up. So it was her idea. It was wait, her idea. She gave up? Sort of. I mean, so she's not drinking. She's eating a little bit better. She's working out once a day. She's not doing the twice a day. So she's, she's taking it easy. But really, the it started because we, we had been drinking a lot. Down here at the beach, it's, it's so easy. Way uh, easy to so just easy drink all the time. And especially yeah. with like our job. Yeah. Like, I, we get done fishing. We could literally be drinking right now. Like, <laughs> <You're> we're right. <laughs> it's twelve forty-five, and I know. I keep, I keep looking weird. for a bourbon bottle. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's it's really easy to drink when you live at the beach. You have the job and the lifestyle that we have, and we just needed like a reset. And mm-hmm. so it's Courtney's idea, and to so do to do what? Is somebody knocking on the door out there? I think. Oh, he's trying I'm, to fix that thing. Yeah. yeah. Um. So it was Courtney's idea to do 75 hard, which I had seen and heard about it, but like I never thought I would ever try to do that. And even the three of us talked about it. I don't know. It's only been a couple months ago, but we were talking about how some people do Sober October. And we were talking we about talking that, like the three we of us possibly you mentioned going it, a month. And I'm like, yeah. I can't do it. And I was like, a month? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> now you're doing 75 days. Now I'm doing 75 yeah. days. And a lot of so other I, stuff. How, so many, how many days are you into it? Today is day 16. Dang. Wow. That's pretty I am, good. I'm super so proud 16 of you. days. I haven't gone no 16 alcohol. days in a long time it's without long any alcohol. T- it's been a long time for me. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> Before this. Yeah. Um, so 75 hard, if you're not familiar with it, is a challenge. I don't know how long it's been around. I thought it was fairly new. I thought it was like a TikTok thing that started coming around. <clears throat> but the more I've researched it, there's people that from like videos from two, three years ago of people talking about oh, it. Yeah. So evidently it's been around who, for a little while. But it's, um, it? Do you know? I should remember his name, but it's... Uh, I can't remember his name right now. Yeah. But so the challenge is 75 days, obviously. And the 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 main thing, at least for me, the main thing was zero alcohol for 75 days. You have to follow a diet. It can be any diet of your choice. You just got to follow it. No cheat meals, anything like that. Um, you have to do two workouts a day, two 45-minute workouts oh, wow. a day. That's intense. One That's of which is supposed to be outside. Which right now is... Uh, and it's like 100 degrees outside. Brutal. It's hot. Um, you have to drink a gallon of water every day. You have to read 10 pages of a non-fiction book, like a self-help sure. business type book. Which that's what I'd r- rather read anyway. Right, yeah. And then... No um, Harry Potter. <laughs> no Harry Potter. And then you have to take a picture every day. Naked? Yeah. For real? <laughs> no. Uh, no. Well, I sent you the pictures. Well, how's that? Well, okay. uh, well. Have you cheated yet? No. Wow. So the only thing I guess I could say that maybe I'm not 100% to the T is the inside-outside workout because my most of my workouts, I have been running outside some. So the first day, my first workout of the 75 hard, I ran slash walked four miles in 45 minutes. And the next morning, I could hardly even walk. It was like some sort of tendonitis on the side of my foot. Oh, I've had that same. You know, you remember when I told you about that? When yeah. I came back from Disney, I had the, like that same thing. And so I literally, I tried to go to the point. 
I like I had to hobble back. Like I, I literally could not walk. Yeah. And so um a lot of my workouts have been in my garage. I kind of still count that as outside. It's I right mean, now garage it's hotter. Is pretty freaking hot. It's hotter in my garage but, than but it is outside. What's the point of the outside workout? So is I, it like to connect with nature or is it like, I'm sure the, some of it is like sunlight, but like with our jobs, I'm I'm in the sun plenty. I'm in the sun right. more than I need to be, probably. That's yeah, true. It's probably to get you outside. So I think it's I think it's just getting you outside, but also no matter the condition, still doing it. So like if it's snowing. So like if it's, it's snowing, if it's raining, if yeah. it's cold as crap. Okay. And so if it's raining, I'm going to go do it just so at the end of it, I can say even on days it rained, I did still go did, outside. Yeah, still did it. Um, but I feel like if I'm in my garage, which feels like a freaking sauna, yeah, like that might as well be outside. Oh, for sure. Um, have you? Uh, but that's the only thing that I have. What differences have you noticed yet? So in the first four days... Or in the first five days, I lost four pounds. Okay. And so I think that was... That was probably a lot of water That was a lot of water weight. And I mean, I was drinking a lot of beer. And so cutting out beer, cold turkey like that, like I lost a lot quickly. Um, As of this morning, which is day 16, I'm down like eight pounds. Nice. So... You know know how many calories it takes to lose a pound? Was it a thousand? 3,500. 3,500. So you have to be in a caloric deficit, 3,500 calories to lose one pound. Interesting. That's crazy. Yeah. So like I've been burning. It's so like most days. It's so like I, I have an Apple Watch, and so I track most of my stuff. I don't know how accurate a lot of it really is, but like yesterday, it, it give, says it I burned fifteen hundred calories. The day before, almost like that's, fourteen. That's from your your active. This or is my active. It's like just the workout, or is that yeah? Like and I'm gonna wear it all day, so like uh, even so just that's... walking around and stuff. Okay. Okay. But every day I'm burning over anywhere from a thousand to sixteen hundred calories a day. You, you may be burning more. I think you burn more. Than and again, that. that's just from what my watch knows of me moving around and my heart rate right. and stuff like that. Right. But. Now, workout doesn't burn as many calories as people think most of the time. Like yeah. usually, you're only going to burn you know two three hundred at a max. Yeah. A lot of mine, like so, I did uh, right before we came here. I did twenty minutes on the Peloton, and it says I burned. Uh, 250 calories in 20 minutes. Yeah. But then, like, yesterday, I do a lot of... It's like some of them... This one, I think that was a 45-minute ride. I burned... It says I burned 500 calories. So that's probably high. So, I mean, who On knows? The side. And I, I mean, I don't really care. Like, it doesn't matter to me... Like, I don't have a certain number, a certain weight I'm trying to hit. Like, I don't really care what right. the weight is. Like, cause um, you, you, I would imagine... You would not care if you weighed the same right now, but had muscle. Right, yeah. And, but, like, could see muscle. Yeah, I don't care if I weigh 200 or 250 matter, if right. I'm jacked, like, whatever. Yeah, it so doesn't it's, matter. It's more or less of, like, not being fat and overweight right. and getting healthy. Because even – so I I didn't check my blood pr- – I wish I would have checked my blood pressure right before I started. But I've always – my blood pressure has always, like, kind of been a little high and up Mine there or whatever. Um, and so it's been a while since I checked it. But I did check it one day at Publix at the thing, yeah. and it was down like twenty points. Like the top number was down like twenty points. Like from closer from where? To, like when was like how did you know what it used to be? From whenever like the last time I had checked it like a while ago. Oh yeah. What, but I mean I haven't gotten what's any your top so number usually at? Like the last time I remember checking it was like one fifty something yeah. over whatever, and then at Publix the other day it was like one thirty over something. So mine is one thirty is way closer. My, What's yeah, it? One twenty. One twenty. I think the like number. The mine usually is one forty, yeah, and really? like, and then certain days it'll be in the one thirties and one twenties. It just yeah. fluctuates. You know? And so I've never kept up with mine regularly, um, but I knew like because most of the times I would check it, it'd be around that one fifty ish. I knew I had high blood pressure, and I didn't really do much. I mean, I t- I talked to your wife and she told me some stuff to take because I didn't want to get on blood pressure medicine. Yeah, like you if definitely it's definitely don't want to, especially do that. not at thirty right. years old. Yeah, once you start um, that cycle, it's yeah. And there's also everybody is different. Some it, like it all. It some people just naturally run a little bit high. I was talking right. to a doctor about this the other day. Yeah, and if like the more of like being on seventy five hard and ser- researching more stuff and just watching more stuff that pops up. Like a lot of the people say, like getting on what do they call them statins? Is that what that's called? No. For high yeah, blood yeah, pressure, yeah, yeah. statin. Uh-huh. Yes. Like getting on those is never actually fix like helping you fix your issue. Like it's not really doing anything for it. It does help bring your blood pressure down, but it's not. It's not getting to the yeah. root cause. You're of not why solving you're any problems. In the first <laughs> like, place. Yeah. And most people, they say, 
end up having more issues from that medication right. than if they would have never even taken and then you a have medication. To take other medications to right, offset to, those issues. Right. It's just a vicious cycle. And so That's knowing America. like even <laughs> obviously I continued on the diet I was on, even though I knew my blood pressure was a little high, but knowing that my blood pressure was high because I was eating like crap and because I wasn't working out enough and because I wasn't I was drinking too much, like I knew I could get my blood pressure down without taking medicine. So it's like there's no point in taking medicine. Yeah, it, it was your fault. It, it's just my fault. And and, and that's and, the truth, man. Like people just right. need to take ownership, take so, responsibility. And so you, it, it, it did make me feel good about because I was I was actually nervous because it, it had been like a little over a week and I was like I'm gonna check my blood pressure. I was like nervous sitting there. I was like because I, I, I felt always like, get nervous checking my. <laughs> oh, no, I don't know why. Am I about to have a heart attack right now? I was like because I was I was like proud of myself for getting this far and I was like I'm gonna be like disappointed right. if it's like higher or yeah. something but but it, when it was lower I texted Courtney I was like my blood pressure is actually quite a bit lower she's like that's awesome so so the last I'm time I'm interested to see like after this if I'm like in yeah. a normal range I, I went to I don't know what the number was but I went to the doctor and for you know to get like some antibiotics or whatever and they were taking my blood pressure and she I, I can't remember what she asked me but she was like is your blood pressure always this low and I was like I, I don't know. I don't ever check it. She was like, it's abnormally low. Like it was yeah. too low. Like wow. lower than what it should have been. That's right. Courtney's too. run is low too. Yeah. I don't know what the number was, but she was, and then she took it again and she was like, okay, it's, you know, normal now or whatever. But hmm. I don't, I don't know what that means. I mean, obviously, blood pressure really low could be bad too. But right. I, I would, I would Either think direction. you'd want it to be a little bit lower than a little right. bit higher. Yeah. But I, I feel who like knows? This. But now I feel like my, for whatever reason, I don't know if it's because I exercise so much now that like at night I can, even when I'm relaxed and my heart rate's not fast, I still feel, I feel my heart rate more. Mm -hmm. I don't know why that is. I need to research it. I don't know if I'm having an issue or not, but it's weird. I don't yeah. know if like I'm, my body like thinks I'm about to exercise if I like stand up or something. It's like, oh, here <laughs> we go. go. <laughs> yeah, here we go. I don't know what it is, but. I doubt. I mean, I think probably you're just more aware of. Yeah. Feeling. Yeah, because, I mean, not a lot of people, like, regularly feel their heart rate get yeah. up to 160, whatever. 170, whatever. whatever you get it to during yeah. working out. And so you're probably just more aware of yeah, I definitely where can... your heart rate is and trying to – because when you're working out, you're trying to breathe mm -hmm. to control that heart rate. Yeah. So I bet it's just – you're just more aware than yeah. normal. I didn't <clears> notice it. Yeah. But So when are you all going to start 75 hard? Never. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like – I. I don't think other than the hardest part for me would be the drinking. Yeah. That, that, because there's so, so many opportunities that I have to have to drink, you know? I right. agree with that. That'd be the hard thing. Like it'd be very difficult for me. I don't really feel like I need to do an extreme, but right. I have like kind of tightened down my like lifestyle a little bit to where now I'm trying to only drink on a weekend. Uh, you know, I'm, I am exercising once a day. Uh, and I've kind of started eat, eating a lot cleaner. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just, I, I'm not going to go that extreme yeah. to a 75 hard, but I am, uh, I've cut back a lot. So. And, and I think for most people, like you don't need to like, well, no, it, it, neither one of y'all drank as much as I sure, did. Sure. Yeah. And so like I was one extreme another way. So to combat that, you got to go extreme the opposite way. Mm -hmm. it, it's the um, whole point of it. Cause we did P90X mm -hmm. and you know, similar to you put like this time stamp on it, 90 days, 75 days or whatever. And it's mm -hmm. like this extreme thing that you overhaul your life. And it's not sustainable, honestly, right. like to do what you're doing for the rest of your life. Yeah, you could do it, but like, that's, some serious yeah discipline. why would you want to do the that? the point is to develop the habits mm -hmm. so like the goal is like at the end of this program is to be better about exercising be right. better about drinking less alcohol be better about reading and doing the things that it kind of teaches you to do absolutely because that and that's where a lot of people fail and that's where we fail with p90x is like we got done we had this number in our mind that like oh we're going to be over at 90 days and then we just went right back into the habits right. that we did before. Whereas, like, now we have a much, like, the way that I live, we've been doing it for, I've been doing it for a year now. So <laughs> that was really loud. I don't that know who just loud. came in the door, but somebody, oh. somebody's really excited Alrighty. to be here. Yeah. <laughs> somebody's um, excited to be here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, we're almost soundproof. Anyway, yeah. But not really. But what I'm doing now is way more sustainable. Like, I'm happy about getting to work out. The diet that I eat is very manageable. It's not like I hate myself. I also right. like to reward, my, like 
reward ourselves like if we have a good week or if we achieve a goal or something like it's always fun to have something to look forward to right like whether it be going out and having a drink or making cocktails at the house i think that that's important too yeah i agree Absolutely. going on a trip yeah drinking this usually revolves, <laughs> revolves around, around alcohol. drinking <laughs> For sure. it's just fun i don't even With, like being drunk like let me just say let me yeah. i want to put that out there because we talk about it I do not like being drunk. I hate the feeling of not being in control. <laughs> Which we did just get back from a trip where we drank a little bit. Which, which trip? Jupiter. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah well, talk- and I still, I don't know that I even got drunk on that trip. I mean, I can, very rarely do I actually yeah. get to that point. Because I just yeah. don't like it. When I start feeling that, like, my, I'm getting to that place, I'm like, oh, I'm going to Time to chill. Yep, I stop I because <laughs> I just don't like it. That was a good time, though. It was a good time. It was a great week. I'm ready to go the, back. The fishing was great. The food was great. Just the all around. The food was really full, great. Food was made. <laughs> the food was more expensive than our dang house. <laughs> Thanks to our podcast, we had the most expensive meals yeah. of our lives. What was the name of that place? Uh, that that 1,000 1, North. It was good. 1,000 North, it yeah. Really good. It so was good. we decided to go to this restaurant that was the top rated restaurant in Jupiter. And Brant we, found it. And yeah, this is definitely bougie a brand, brand. A ba- okay. Brand place. But you, it was good though. No, it was, it was great. I'd have been like, let's go to Chipotle. And so <laughs> our, uh, our our podcast is now generating money, yeah. not very much. It had generated like fifteen hundred dollars up, uh, you know, for the year. It's, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. Crushing, <laughs> crushing it. it. Yeah. Crushing it. We ended up paying for our meal with the money that the podcast uh, had made, and we ended up coming close to that. Uh, yeah. that <laughs> breaking the bank. Knocking it all out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Might as well. It, was, which was fun. It, it, it was, was fun. It was fun to do that. It was that. a good time. It was enjoyable. So walking up to the place, um, I, I've told this story to a few people uh, they had valet parking, but and I dr- and I drove the Bumby Mobile down oh there. Oh my goodness! Which, you know, if you're unfamiliar, uh, it's a 2003 Toyota Forerunner. It's got almost 300 thousand miles on it. It is a, uh, it's a, it runs great, but it looks like trash. I mean, it's missing. It's not. Ga- that, it's not like beat up. It's just it's like pretty real faded bad. next to a next to a Lambo. Yeah, yeah that's pretty well, bad. That's the thing. Know, there's like, like Bentleys and ex- Mercedes. And- but well, the Mercedes and the BMWs were literally like. The crappy cars. They were the yeah. worst not, cars in the parking lot. I am not exaggerating. Like walking up, they, there were Rolls Royce, Bentley, Bugatti. Yeah. I didn't see Bugatti, but like uh, there were like everything was a lot of high end stuff. Max out. <laughs> it was funny because me and uh, well, I didn't. <laughs> well, you know, have a nice car though. <laughs> okay, we go out to eat a lot at really nice restaurants, and so I was like thinking it was just going to be another night out. And me and Brad walked up to the bar before you got there, and I ordered some bourbon for me and Brad. And I just ordered one shot of bourbon apiece, and it was like Woodford Double Oak, which is very standard. Yeah, nothing uh, crazy. Every bar is going to have it. Um, and I got like a $105 <laughs> bill for two glasses of Woodford Double Oak that were like like a shot. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It's going to be a little price. Yeah. <laughs> be I was thinking person. it was going to be like a, a $25, $30 dollar bill, something like that. And, and something that was weird, and if any of y'all know why, comment below and let us know. But so he got his neat, which is with no ice. <laughs> yeah. And I got mine with like a nice, perfectly round ball of ice. And mine was more And expensive. they charged us, or him. Me for <laughs> it's like it was three, a fee, it was $3. It's $3 for, neat. for no ice. Yeah. It was so yeah. weird. We are an upcharge for If no anybody ice. knows Please anything comment. about that, I'd love to know. Because I like I thought very, I was very getting interesting. cheaper. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hold the ice. <laughs> That's gonna cost you three dollars. <laughs> it saved you a step. <laughs> yeah, that is oh, what it is. That was wild. But that that was the last trip we went on and we did pretty good with the fishing. Fishing was yeah, great. It was Grant good. found yeah. so you the spot that we spent most of our time, because mm-hmm. like that was where everything was happening. You you went there the first day and like kind of scoped it out. Yeah, so I well I had done some research. Uh, How did you already know about like did you see some videos so, about that? So spot? I, well I didn't know that it was going to be as good as it was. I had seen a couple of videos of guys catching jacks off the rocks oh, there, okay. and so I was like, well I'm going to stop there. It's accessible, so I pulled in there. And there was like a few fishermen out there. I saw a guy catch a jack and then I'm just like walking around looking. There's bait everywhere. And I'm like looking down at the rocks and there's just snook everywhere. And I'm like, 
like, why is nobody fishing? You're not exaggerating. No, uh, I'm no. like, why is, why is, why is nobody fishing here? Like, did these snook not bite? Like, what am I missing? Yeah. And so, uh, I was like, well, I think we got a chance here. So we went back that afternoon and I, I caught a snook like within like probably one minute of having my bait in the water. So I'm like, well, apparently they do bite. Like, this is the and, spot. Uh, we ended up everybody, including other guys that were on the trip, like Sean and Je- Sean Lawless, Lawless Tide, yakking with Jack. Everybody caught a ton of fish. So oh, yeah. It was cool. And it, what was weird is like there were all these people that were on. I don't know what you call that. They do they call it a pier? Like they the, do the, call the walkway it, uh, out onto the jetty. I think they call it a pier, but I don't know what you call. I don't know. It. Anyway, we were on the jetty, so like wall. the area where it's kind of they have it built up for fishing. Mm-hmm. It's easier, I guess, and accessible. And that's where most everybody was. Hardly anybody was out on the rocks like us. Mm-hmm. And I I didn't pay that much attention because we were typically pretty busy. Somebody was always catching something or yeah. we were looking at fish. So I wasn't looking a lot. But every time I'd look over there, it didn't look like anything was happening. Like people were catching I fish. never noticed anybody. I know. And uh, me and Brad had the most insane, like, one hour afternoon ever there like it was, was nuts. it was crazy just tarping and snook across the whole uh, blow it up and and we got to a point where um why didn't we have bait we ran oh, out of bait well we weren't expecting it to be like that it that's was right middle we, we kind of the got there we, we're, we're waiting on the chilling. tide to change a little more no, had no bait we had, we had like four baits didn't bring our prepared. lures we had used them and they literally Fish were just blowing up all over the middle of the pass. And I'm trying to throw And Brand's like, net. go get an L- NLB. And so we like run into the back of the car, like trying to get something. And we get back and it kind of slowed down. And then I hung like, three on an NLB. Like, I don't know. Do I tie on the NLB in or do I keep going for live uh, bait? You're like, well, I don't know what to do. That was wild. Yeah. I hung I a tarpon and I, I had helped Brant land some fish mm. off the jetties. And then I uh, hung a tarpon and got it there. And Brant just. I, no, took a sweet time I, and let them break off. No, I grabbed a fish and it bit me. I saw the video. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not it kidding. It bit me. Dude, what happens ever... <laughs> when you put your hand in a fish's I'm mouth? Not... Okay, so I've lipped a lot of tarpon and I grabbed this tarpon and it like latched onto my finger and it hurt and I like pulled it away. <laughs> You would be the uh, one to get bit by it. And so he like, and then he like broke the line. Right. So it was well, my fault. I saw the video. It it looked like you had a couple of chances. I did, I mean, it, but it was okay. So I was but down not there. Easy. Tarpon are not easy to handle. They're and not, snook are ten times easier to grab than yes. tarpon. Yeah. First and foremost, when I tarpon are way more powerful. When they're you right. grab a tarpon, yes. he like starts if, if they want to do they are, and he does whatever. Right. And I didn't want to hurt the fish because sure. I felt like if I really grabbed onto him, I was going to hurt the fish. Yeah. And then he bit me, and I was just <laughs> like, "Hold." <laughs> <laughs> and then this this kid comes up with this little like bait net. <laughs> yeah, you see like, it like, in the corner of the screen. Oh, just this, like man. he's like, you want to use this? And I was that like, it's not gonna so help. Bray's like, funny. we'll try it. Bray's like, try to get him with a bait was, net. I, I mean, I'll, like, I'll admit, like we weren't prepared. No, we need to. Are we ever? No, we no. definitely need a big net in that situation where we net the fish because right. when you try to grab a tarpon, I've done this in the Everglades too. When you try to grab a tarpon and like pull him up and like try to take the hook out of his mouth you do a lot of damage to the fish yeah, sure and uh because tarpon man un- a snook you can subdue really mm-hmm. easily a tarpon you can't they go crazy right and they end up hurting themselves and end up dying and so w- we definitely need a net in the future yeah. <laughs> after that broke off and we were getting up and we gave the net back to the guy the guy was like y'all just need to bring a gaff out here <laughs> <laughs> yeah just yeah, yeah like, that'd go for just, ga- just dig them <laughs> we, yeah. we can't gaff the tarpon <laughs> can't funny. do that people just don't have a clue, <laughs> oh man, yeah, dude. Those storms down there, you, you know, we get obviously stuff pops it's up nuts. here, but it's different. Those are Florida. wild every afternoon, and it, it's like on you. And it was it was that afternoon, I think, or no, yeah, it might have been the day no, before. It was, you it was the day I was that on, the, well, um, I was on the there. beach one day, and we about got our butt. No, it, it, well, it was that afternoon because Matt wasn't there, and this insane storm comes yeah. up, and I ran and got in the car. I think I was trying to like maybe catch one more. You were at the snook end for my video or something. Up. They were blowing up, yeah. and this storm just kept getting closer and closer. I was trying to like push it as long as I could because I mean the fish were there, and uh, it was gnarly. Eventually, it was like I don't need to wait here anymore. And so I like ran back to the car and as I, I'm like almost to the car and it starts pouring. And as I get in, like the storm's on top of us now. It's yeah. like, this is it happens sketchy. So fast. It is, it is scary down there. Yeah. 
Uh, you got to be careful. Yeah, it was uh, it was wild. Really cool place to fish, and I would love uh, I'm I'd love to go back. Like I'm going back. Very accessible. I'm, go. I'm going back. This yeah. I know weekend. a guy. I got his number. He said that. Uh, to hit him up when we we're in town. So that that's, a, that's oh. another funny story. Oh, we're gosh. gonna let, all right. So we'll just kind of ease into this one. Yeah. But Brad sitting in church the other day and he got a phone call. <laughs> Gets a phone yeah. call. <laughs> this was uh this was crazy. So yeah, we're sitting in church and uh, my phone rings and I look at it. Which and... you need to be on airplane mode by the way in church. Yeah, Brad. What are you doing oh, on your Brad. phone in Sorry. church? At least I didn't answer this phone call. <laughs> I almost did. House. I almost walked out. Of I church. am surprised you I would have. I think I would have. That's what Courtney said. She's like, Why didn't you walk I out? I would have like, walked out. If I'd seen that, I'd have been yeah. like, Okay, I'd probably need to I'm call. looking for yeah. an excuse to like walk get, get, like a bathroom break or something. <laughs> so it's like, like anything to get me <laughs> out of here. Please. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Oh, you're gonna have to do a couple of Hail Marys or something. I, I mean, you know how it is. You need to break it up every now and then. Get a like, commercial break. Oh, that was funny. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, we're sitting in church and my phone rings and I look at it. And it's like I have Verizon and I think if if you all have Verizon, it'll tell you like the who the name is. of who's calling yeah. or like the other account or whatever. And so my phone says Robert Errington. <laughs> and I'm like I'm, <laughs> And my wife, like, oh, after this, this all happened, funny. my wife tells me, she's like, you looked so confused. I'm, I'm literally <laughs> trying to figure this like, out. Just, like, staring at my like, phone. Uh, and do I know anything like, what are you doing? Like, are you going to ignore it? Are you going to answer? What are you doing? I'm literally just staring at my phone. And I'm like, no way Robert Arrington's calling me. By I'm the like, way, if y'all don't know who Robert Arrington is, it is deer meat for dinner. Yeah. He's the... Number, Probably the most one. influential outdoor video creator in the world. Yeah. Amazing content. Super nice guy, seems like. So continue. Yeah. And so I'm staring at my phone like, there's there's got to be another Robert Arrington. Or this, like, why would he call me on a Sunday morning? <laughs> <laughs> like, I've never talked to the guy oh, in my life. Yeah. So I'm like super confused. We need to get him <laughs> on the podcast. We got to get him on the podcast. Yeah, I'll, I'll hit him up. Yeah, and, <laughs> yeah you got his stuff for now. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so I ignore his call like an idiot because yeah. I'm in church. And uh, I Googled uh, his area code, and it says Jupiter, Florida. I'm like, well, it's got to be him. I'm like, I know he lives in Jupiter. Yeah, because now we've narr narrowed it down to a, a location. <laughs> so I'm like right. a Robert Arrington in Jupiter, Florida. Like, I mean, it's got to be how him. Many are, how many yeah. are there? And um, so I text him. I said, hey, man, in church, I'll call you back in a minute. And this is actually kind of funny. So I'm um, as I get my kids and we're walking out of church and I call him like the second we get out the right, door. yeah, sure, immediately. And so he answers. He's like, "Yo, what's up, dude?" And I'm like, "What's up, man?" Like he, he didn't introduce. Like he, he knew that I knew who it was gonna be. Like he never said, "Hey, man, it's Robert." Oh, man. He was like, "What's up, dude?" And I was like, "Hey, what's Just up?" Automatically, yeah, it's assume. like you know like, me. Yeah, <laughs> that's that is kind of funny. And uh, like five seconds into the conversation, I hear these kids behind me. They're like, "Is that bearded Brad? Is that bearded Brad?" Oh, that's funny. And I'm on the phone with Robert. <laughs> and then they ended up walking up next to me as I'm in the middle of talking to them. And they're like, are you bearded Brad? I was like, yeah, but I'm on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With, I'm, like, me for dinner. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not hanging up this call. You're going to have to wait, buddy. That's right. That's right. So I felt bad. I kind of like pushed oh, these kids man, off to the side. Funny. It's okay. You were mean to kids. But, <laughs> <laughs> but so he was like, he was at, there was a, um, a Buckmaster expedition, Ex expo, expo. Basic. It's a big, it's a big thing in Montgomery. You in know, Montgomery, that's yeah. from the area I'm originally from. And yeah, and so, turns out, so when I'm talking to him, he's like, "I heard y'all talked about me on your podcast or whatever." I was like, "Yeah, look, look at before. us, look at us, <laughs> big time yeah. over yeah. here, fifteen hundred dollars, thousand, thousand views and up. <laughs> Haven't right? posted in two months. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna post more. We we really we are now. We were waiting this, for we're, we were yeah. waiting for the podcast room to be finished. Yeah. But yeah, man, um, that's wild. And so I was like, yeah, we, we've talked about you on there before, whatever. And um, At least I've, we were positive. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Could have been hating on him. Yeah. Uh, I mean, not like when Two Conks is going to call us at the end of this. Two Conks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we, we, got gonna, two, we got Two Conks. We're going to ease yeah. into Two Conks here in a minute. Yeah, but. yeah. But so like we're talking, and I've talked to his brother, his oldest brother, some, who's not a content creator. Um, but he was actually, I don't, I don't know the exact story. We we're supposed to get him on the podcast and I still want to have him on. 
Um, I don't know if he started fish rolls or just acquired. I don't. I don't know the whole story. We'll get into that whenever we have him on which the podcast. Which is like but, the most functional app you yeah. can have. For he food. he which is we, like we the just, owner We just set up some type of an account with on there. Something we're we're, we're with Fish Brain, yeah. so Fish Brain I think actually ended up acquiring Fish Thought. Rolls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Robert's oldest brother had the app Fish Rolls, which will tell you all your regulations and stuff. It knows your you can put in your GPS yeah. location. Anyways. Um, I talked about them on a video. Anyway, so I've talked to Robert's brother because of that. So I was telling Robert that I, I know, kind of sort of know his brother, met him, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, well, you got my phone number now. Like, call me sometime. We'll, we'll get together fish. I was like, uh, yes, yes. Yes. Awesome. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, That's really cool. At so, some point in time, we will hopefully have Deer Meat for Dinner on the podcast. Robert, well if as... you're listening, we'd love to have you on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah it, you're welcome anytime. As, as soon as like we hung up the phone and I'm driving home, I'm like, why didn't I already ask him to be on the podcast? Yeah. Well, I was more or less just like listening. I mean, obviously, like, we we would totally have him, but he'd have to, you know, it'd be out of his way to come here. We'd have to maybe go there. Well, next but, time we're in Jupiter. Or I mean, South he was three yeah, hours or, away. Yeah. Like, right. I would have drove to Montgomery. Right. He, yeah. Yeah. He, that would have been easy. Yeah. And we we do go down there a lot. But, I mean, shoot, we should just pay for him to come up here. Yeah. Are they from Jupiter? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, okay. they grew up there. Gotcha. No, that'd be so awesome. that, that was really cool. And But now, that's the thing about you know, Brad, Brad, though. You you he I don't know if we've talked about this on a podcast before, but, like, you connect so well with people, other people. in this industry. Yeah. I said that in the text the other day. Yeah. He has a very unique ability to connect with people. Where like you have connected, and I don't with, even know why. Like I, know, <laughs> I, I don't like do like, anything. I mean, specific. you've connected with the Guggen Squad, yeah. Deer Meat for Dinner. So how did he... I know y'all didn't message back about that? But uh, after we after we're talking about Robert, Norm, and Ao want to come here and fish in October. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously home. they're welcome anytime. Yeah, yeah. So. And, but how did Robert get your number? Who was it? So it turns out, so he told us that, or told me that he heard us talking about it in podcast anyway. So. One of our subscribers, um, Tom, Tom I, I guess, had my phone number. And is that T Ray? T Ray. Is yeah. that he's the one that took T-Ray. the picture? Yeah. Okay. So I'm I'm thinking that T Ray told him, gave him my number, and that's how all that happened. So T Ray's got your number. Yeah. Okay. That's he's cool. he's like and, a number one. And fan. he gave my number to Robert, and which is. Hey, <laughs> we that's owe, okay we owe t-ray a dinner <laughs> yeah, thank you t-ray yeah thank you t-ray he's a big fan dude. yeah he is he's, he's a big cool. supporter he's a cool dude we've so, all uh, we've all met him yeah he's probably cool. watched the podcast thanks thanks t-ray yeah so he's you know a lot of times they're like people ask interviews of like so who's the most famous contact in your phone or whatever and it's like they'll like name off like some crazy person uh well you meet for dinner is now i don't have any most famous, famous. I, I mean you guys the most famous person in my phone is Bama Beach Bomb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. Seriously, yes. like you guys. I, I, like, oh, nobody. So, yeah, well, you I don't got... connect with people as well as Brad. I'm kind of like, I don't know. I mean, it's just you have an ability to really yeah. connect with other influencers, which is cool. So. That, yeah, that is cool. And uh, you ha- you could have connected with two cogs. We did, sort <laughs> of. <laughs> we went to their I'll tackle store. Him. Uh, so hey, they're hot and heavy in the news right now. We got to talk about heavy. them. We got to talk about before the two we cons close. Things. We have to talk about two cons. Yeah, because this that is uh, this is some fishing news. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's kind of disappointing, but it's well, very disappointing. So we can to tell this story. We need to start when we were in the Florida Keys. Brad, didn't you have the it, first experience? And he mentioned something on the podcast, and we yeah. we kind of brushed it. Well, you didn't even mm-hmm. say the name. I was like, well, don't say their name, right? But I, t- I talked about them in my video. So I went down to the Keys. And well, I, so I went down in December last year and I went to two conks and kind of got a weird vibe, but nothing crazy. Um, they weren't like overly nice, but they weren't rude. I didn't, it was just like whatever. And so we went back. What's up, dude? Um, we went back in uh, May for my wife's birthday and I went back in there and they were never rude to me specifically. But there were two different instances, one of which they were on the phone. Somebody called and, like, asked if they have live shrimp. He was like, yeah, we got shrimp hung up. I was like, yeah, that, that gets old, done. I was like, we got a tackle store ball. Just trying to, like, shoot the crap with mm. him. And he's like, yeah, these people just come in here and want me to shop for them, want me to do this, got all these questions. I'm like, do my job. <laughs> you, you literally work at a tackle store. Like, <laughs> I mean, what do you, what do you, what do you think is going to happen? You want to just sit there and it's check like, people uh, out? Like, whatever. Customer service. And then – um and then this other dude walks in, and the guy, the guy at the register, is literally just staring at his phone. And this guy walks in, and was like, 
Man, I see y'all stuff online. Like, I guess Two Conks also has a YouTube channel. Yeah, they have a and lot. So they, yeah. they have yeah. a lot going They post on. a lot of content. And anytime you have a big business, they do have one of the largest charter businesses in the country. They have a, a really cool-looking store uh, yeah. that's set up really nice. Do they have they, one, more than one location? Yeah, I think so. They've got a marina. I don't know if they have more I think than they have one a marina. tackle store, but they do. They, they have their have, charters, like, all over the Yeah, They may the, even have a restaurant, but... Uh, so they have a big presence, and anytime you have a big presence, obviously you're putting yourself out there, more things yeah, can happen. Sure. So I do understand, like, from, uh, like, I've ran charters. I've ran probably 2,000 boat charters. And so what happened the other day was, man, it was bad. Like, I've, I've had a lot of bad stuff happen on my boat, but as the captain, in my personal opinion, you always have to stay level-headed and calm. Oh, yeah. Because if, as soon as you lose it, as soon as you start getting mad and freaking out and getting emotional, like, bad things can happen out there on the water, and your number one job is to keep everybody safe. Yeah. So, um, yeah. <clears throat> if y'all don't know what happened, just look up, Two conks video. <laughs> It'll on, be the first thing that yeah, pops oh, yeah. out on Facebook. It, it the, went viral. The full video is like a minute twelve. And so I I can understand from the captain's perspective why he got upset because he was probably with a group of inexperienced anglers that did not know what they're doing, which is normal and which expected. Is very at, normal as a charter and captain. And apparently some things happened. One being that the angler hit the throttle and almost threw the captain overboard into the engines. Now that is obviously like uh, that could be very dangerous, especially like the props turning. Uh, so I can understand why he got super angry. But I mean, ha like, however, ha how are they in that situation? The person? Yeah, however, that's, that's like, my thing with that. So that's what I was getting at. Two conks. <clears throat> I, I don't know if it's the owner or the main captain. Somebody, the somebody has come out as two conks representing two. I'm conks. assuming he's the owner. Must yeah, be the I owner, and has said basically said that. Both were in the wrong, the customer and the captain. Let me, oh, well, let me read the it. The captain. Let me read it. Go ahead and I'm, read it. I'm going to read it. Okay. So this was, the, they de they've deleted it since then. Because when I read this, I was like, this is the worst mm -hmm. response. I was like, How I don't know. stupid can you I don't be? know who handles your PR, but <laughs> you need to fire them. Yeah, or you need to get a PR sure. person because this was terrible. <clears throat> so the video, the, this captain is like dog cussing. The client, mm -hmm. yeah. like, which you uh, never do with that's what with I a ten year old and a twelve year old yeah. on the Under children. Any circumstance you cussing do cussing them that. up and down, okay? Because of the incident where that's what yeah. So he throttle. almost threw him overboard and he lost yeah. his cool. Which again, cool. I'm and supposedly there were some other things that happened, but sure. regardless, doesn't matter. Like if you see the video, it's it's not acceptable. Yeah. So anyway, here's the response, official response initially from Two Cox. Recently, there's been a video by one of the customers that Captain Chris. Is it Lassen? Is that how you say his last name? Something know. like that. Lassen. Yeah, we'll go with it. Uh, had out on his charter. So that's the guy that was in the video. Captain Chris was in the back of the boat, and he was dealing with some mahi they had just caught, and the client mistakenly slid into the throttles and forced Chris off the back of the boat, and he landed on the dive platform, which saved him from going into the motor, which would have been very bad, like very Awful. dangerous. Awful, yeah. Of course, is, is so this is two conks talking now. Of course, he got heated in the situation and said some things that we do not condone at any time. For, like, of course. You know, yeah. Like, okay. For, like, that's just bad wording. I would not have said that. Once he calmed down, so that's, you know, a typo there, uh, the customers and him spoke, and they decided to still continue the charter and ended up catching Mahi Mahi. At the end of the day, I believe both parties were wrong with what they did, and the customer did end up tipping Captain Chris $200 for his services. Hopefully, this is a lesson for both people to be careful of the throttle situation. So they're like legit calling out. The, the customer. customer and be careful on how to react in front of kids in situations like this, even though your life could have been in a, a danger. So he's trying to take up for the captain. It yeah. And then he goes on about how great the captain is after that. Like he says, Chris, uh, this year alone has been accredited with saving five lives on the water. Two were missing, uh, blah, 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 which, you know, that's great. Yeah. Maybe but, so. Dude. But like, listen, like, first of all, <laughs> you don't, you, it's not the customer's fault. Like no. you're the captain of the boat. You're in charge. It's not the customer's fault. And, like, you're going on about how they continue the trip and they still paid you money. Like, the, the, your your post should have been, hey. Uh, so sorry. This should never happen. He's fired. We fully refunded the, the customers. Right. We offered them an additional free trip at no yeah. cost if they so choose. 
Uh, this is not how we conduct our business. We will never. This will never happen again. So yeah. sorry. Like that. That's it. That's, that's, it. Uh, that's done, how you handle it. Right. Like yeah. you, you don't start pointing <laughs> fingers at the customer saying, "Yeah, they were kind of in the wrong," and our captain's really, really awesome. Yeah. You know, like no, like that just is a bad look. It it was bad. And the number one like rule of being a boat captain is to control your emotions. Because there are so many instances out there where you're going to get angry, you're going to get frustrated, you're going to get mad at people, you're going to want to cuss people out. Like, you cannot do that. Right. Yeah. Like, it is just, especially with a 10-year-old kid, that's what I was getting at earlier. Yeah, he had a bad situation, hit the throttle. I don't know how that even happens. I've never had a customer even come close to my throttle because I, w- I wouldn't allow them to come close So they're, close like, to running. The-, the boat's running, yeah. right? Yeah. And he's at the back of the boat. He, not- they're obviously trolling, and he's not paying attention or something, and which is not good. So right. I'm guessing there wasn't a deck hand on the boat. Uh, that's why I think, like, regardless – even if the customer was in the wrong, I mean, surely it was an accident. I don't think he purposely. No, he but, pushed but the even, even still, if but, one of the kids goes up there and like that's still on the captain. Yeah, like if if the captain does not have a deck hand and he's got to go to the back of the boat, you should probably kill the motors and go to the back of the boat. It also, what I don't like about it is it gives fishermen and charter boat captains kind of a bad name. That's the biggest thing. And, and so there's already a reputation All out right, there yep. for fishermen, for captains. And you know, I was a captain for had nine years, and I can tell you there's a lot of good ones out there. Sure. And I don't know any that I've ever worked with that would ever do what that guy did. I yeah. mean, they would say, hey, listen, you know, this trip isn't really going according to plan. Maybe it's time we take it in or something like that. Sure. I've yeah. seen that happen. Or, hey, this just did not working out. You know, I'm not going to charge you guys. Let's go back to the dock. Totally fine and acceptable. What that, what he did, man, he just embarrassed himself. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and in industry. Like, I mean, that mm-hmm. looks bad on the industry. Mm-hmm. It, that already doesn't have a great face. And that and that's something that we're trying to change. You know, we want to change that mantra. We want to change that. We are. You know, <coughs> it's stigma. hard. It's, it's been, it's difficult. And we are like, I feel like bringing new people into the industry, uh, like our, viewers that we get to meet in the store that might not have ever even been a fisherman if it weren't for our videos. So that's one thing that we really uh, enjoy doing. Absolutely. We should offer like a free surf fishing trip to those kids. (laughs) (laughs) I wonder where where they're from. I mean, you may not catch a mahi, but you'll have a good time. Uh, Can you imagine like if you were on a plane and the captain just walks out of the cockpit (laughs) It starts dog cussing the passengers. Yeah, that's what that's it's like. That's basically what happened. Yeah. I mean, when you're on a boat out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, I mean, when we went, okay. when we were down in the Keys, when we were catching the Mahi, we were like 15 to 20 miles offshore. Yeah. So they very well could have been 15 to 20 miles sure. offshore. Which is where they which were. Which is about an hour offshore. Yeah. And you're the dude that is literally in control of your life right now. It has lost is, it. Is like a nutcase. Lost, lost his it. mind. Yeah. Like that is those not kids, a good situation. I guarantee you those kids like had some nightmares. Well, did you um, see they are probably uh, never gonna want to go off. Did you see the again. video they posted this morning? Uh they posted the captain a, talking a, again? No, they posted a new video this morning with the actual owner of the company saying that they fired him. Yeah, I, well, yeah, I did yeah. see that, but he he didn't say that in the video. It was just in the title. It'll be in the title. And he said he no longer runs he no charters longer runs under, under two the, conks. Under I, I, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I missed yeah. that part. But like it was, it, you could tell he was reading it. Yeah. Like, you know, it was so. He was definitely reading. But, he but had then somebody else they, write that one for They him. deleted that post that I just read because that was terrible. Yeah. This one was at least better. Like the yeah. way that he, it was very unemotional. You could tell he oh, didn't give a crap. Goodness. Which is just a bad, but it was a better wording as yeah. how they handled it. So evidently somebody reached out and like, hey, bro. Um, <laughs> probably not, not the here. best thing you need to your... delete that post and come as back big out. as that company is they gotta have some investors or something they're like a 26 boat fleet and so i'm sure that like he may be the owner but i'm sure there's some people that can tell him what to do yeah they're and like i bet he got a phone call yeah they're like this that, is that a company's too big to not have some some yes. money behind them yes yeah if i would have read that as an investor i, or I owner, mean I'd be I'm like, just, <laughs> could you imagine like if you're sitting here at the store and a customer does something that you don't like and you just start cussing <laughs> them out like, <laughs> like, <laughs> oh gosh just, i mean look okay i get it like i i did charter and yeah. it can be frustrating you get some people I had one trip that I point to and this guy he was drunk you know which usually is a bad start to begin with yeah and I'm not even on a boat but like the is this dude, a morning trip 
It was afternoon. Okay. It was afternoon. Um, and he had, he was lit, and he was just complaining the mm-hmm. whole time, like the whole everything I did. Is he by himself? No, he had two other guys, and they kept apologizing to me for him. Oh, but like, they did. Yeah, like they kept apologizing wow. to me. But event, but I pulled him to the side. I mean, he's drunk, but I pulled him to the side and said, "Hey, man, we don't have to be here. Like, if you don't want to do this, like, we can go home." Because I mean, it, it was <laughs> right. really to that point. Like, why are we? And I, and I wasn't gonna charge him. Like, if you're having a bad time. Let's just go. Yeah. Like, there's no. You're like, like, I don't want to go too. I don't want to be here. You don't want to be here. Yeah. We ain't got to be here, bro. Like, this is not a big deal. Mm-hmm. Anyway, he ended up, we ended up catching. He wanted to catch a shark. Like, that was all he cared about. And we lit, and we caught a shark. Like, he yeah. caught a like five six foot. Was he tip. happy? I don't think so. But he was drunk. I don't even remember. Yeah, but he caught <laughs> well, it. Sometimes it, you're not gonna make. But anyway, it the happy. point is, like, I get it. The you know people are can be extremely frustrating mm-hmm. and hard to deal with. And maybe the maybe these clients were, I mean, they had kids, maybe the, I don't, you know, whatever, well, kid, but still, yeah, it's not, it's a typical charter. Yeah. You, you just, know? you, you swallow it, man. Like yeah. you just, yeah. It, yeah. it's, it's bad, but I digress. Yeah. I've never had any charters like that. I want, like I've had charters where I got frustrated, but man, I, I would never lose my cool like that. Yeah. It's just, it's all, I mean, the, the captain is honestly lucky that, the dad didn't like lose his stuff after Ser- that. Like, seriously, like some people would have lost their mind if you start could talking you to him. Imagine like that. if he would have done that to the wrong person. Like he did it could have got thrown over overboard? Because I mean, he, it was they just that drive level. his boat in. Yeah, I, if it was would have been my dad on that charter, and I was like the ten year old kid, it, I would have been scared for what would have happened. Yeah, like, would have been a fight. Yeah, no doubt. And that, and that's why <clears throat> and that's why you don't no. go to that level. Because I mean, you just you don't want to end up in that. So you're, you know, an hour offshore. Right. You lose your cool. Whoever you got loses their cool. It's not good for crap anybody. goes down. Not you got kids on the good boat. For like anyone. it's just not good for not anyone. acceptable. Yeah. Uh-uh. Not acceptable. Man. And even it's the two two conks is big enough that like they're still gonna be fine. They're still gonna get charged. Oh, yeah. It's it's gonna hurt them for a minute probably. Yeah. But that captain it might not even that captain's done. Right. And that and like okay. he's gonna have to. And this looks bad. Maybe on, go to another place and maybe get some trips, yeah. but like he's and, done in the keys. And this looks mm-hmm. bad on two conks, but you know, obviously, when you start hiring people, it, like you can't control everything. Like, I mean, I'm sure we're gonna have stuff that, that we right. deal with. You know, having a company with people, obviously, you do the best that you can to get the people that align with your values. And when somebody doesn't, you immediately like that's what that was my problem. Like that first initial post was like he's taking up for his dad. Right. captain. I'm like no. It's like, also not the first po- negative post that that captain's received. So like I don't know if you saw the other post about him. So there, there were people saying yeah we've been with him. Great fisherman, like super anal and uptight, and like cut, drops f bombs around kids all day. Well, and honestly, like that does happen a lot though. Unfortunately. I mean, it may, not the, I don't, that level. I don't know that the F-bombs and stuff mm-hmm. happen around our area here sure. as much. Like, we have a really good group of guides in this area, but I know in other parts it does. But yeah. there are some salty captains. There are. I mean, like, sure. it's just part of, like, for sure. there is a stereotype to the and industry, like, and it's true to a degree. I say stuff in front of my kids that I probably shouldn't say in front of them. and And if it's, like... In conversation, and that's just how the person talks. Like you can kind of get over those things when you're screaming. Oh well, the way that yeah. was a problem. Like yeah. dropping f bombs. Like I know not everybody agrees with that, sure. but it's not the end of the world. But when you're screaming it and you're being yeah, that, that aggressive, I mean, you about just it. made yourself an internet meme. For the rest <laughs> of the ride. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> talk about getting famous. Yeah, I know. And and two conks can be like a a mm. verb now. You know, yeah. like I'm gonna two conk you or. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds oh, more man. like a <laughs> position. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, their name already is like, come on, man. I know. Yeah. A- after our dealings with them when we were down there, we did change their name to two something. Yeah, well, but I, I mean, dude, there's, I don't like, have to think there's already like lots of videos getting posted <laughs> around one of my it. Kids. Like there was there was a video this morning where a guy was, was sitting on the back of the boat and he was this big dude and he was drinking beer and you could tell he was getting drunk and the video was titled the video uh, the the two conks video that never got posted and he like drank the beer and fell backwards into the engine. <laughs> <laughs> the internet 
it oh, never loses, man. man. Have y'all seen? So you know how, like, on Facebook, like, if there's a natural disaster or whatever, you can, like, mark yourself safe? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And have you seen all the ones going around? It's like, uh, mark myself safe, safe from, from two, two cops. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Oh, man. man. Sorry. Dang. Two cops. Yeah, we're, we're sitting here laughing, uh, but we are very vulnerable to these things. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, yeah. it's going to be us. It, 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 somebody's going to be making fun of us for some viral crap. That right. Surprise, they already are. So, yeah. I, well, no, but I'm saying, like, something's, you know, we, we're yeah. very vul- open to we the, are, that potential. Are. But again, like you said, it's all about how you handle it. That's if they would have came out and handled it differently, we we probably still would have talked about it, but we'd be talking about the captain, not the company. Right. But now we're talking about both because of the way I they handled like the situation. I feel like they just handled it terribly. Yeah. Like, I mean, I it, just, it just looks bad. Uh, but again, like I was saying, yeah, I mean, you, you hire bad seed and stuff happens, yeah. but you handle it. Yeah, like, you can't control all that. That's right. I mean, I'm sure they're a great company. They Maybe. they have a great presence in the Keys. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's billboards. So they got nice. billboards everywhere. <laughs> there's billboards everywhere. They've got a sharp looking logo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're, they're, they're doing every, something Their boats right. look sharp. I, I got to give them credit for the business stru- Sa- structure. Sounds like maybe a lot of that's gone to their heads. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. might yeah. they might be feeling. And I don't know anything else thing. about them. I don't know if they're great fishermen, good people. Oh, I don't yeah. know, but they from a tourist going down to the Keys. I was like, yeah, it looks like. From, from the captain's standpoint, like the arrogance that comes from like from his angle, obviously you can tell his pride's hurt and he's angry mm-hmm. and like trying to. I've been I've been doing this every day for right. whatever long, yeah, bro. Yeah. You catch fish, yeah, right. Like it, nobody cares. Like, it's not. I even hate that when fishermen say I've been doing this. For, I get those comments all the time. Like I don't care. Like, like that's yeah. great, I, dude. I, I don't understand <clears throat> the. It, and it does happen a lot. There's there's people that are in this industry or not even in the industry. The people that just do it for fun that are so arrogant about the fact that they catch fish. Right. It's like w- I, w- nobody cares. Like yeah. do you understand? Nobody. As cares. if catching fish, a big fish, somehow makes you a better person in life or something. Like it, it's or more successful or right. it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. I, I I don't get it. Is, mm-hmm. is my point. I don't I understand don't where that arrogance and pride comes from from yeah. the fact that you catch fish. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. if you are going down to the Keys and you do want to go <laughs> offshore, go to Bud and Mary's Marina in Isla Mirada, Florida and is check out Stanzik? Captain Nick Stanzik. Nick Stanzik. He doesn't okay. run a ton of charters anymore. He's had some health issues. Um, but that marina's been there for a long time. Probably probably the most famous marina in the Keys. Probably the one that's been there the longest. Really cool place. Uh, so check out Bud and Mary's. Feed the and, tarp uh, in there. They're not going to scream and cuss yeah. at you. A lot of tarp in it. Okay. You can yeah. feed the tarp in But there. Mary's cool. and uh, Robbie's. Robbie's is another one. Mm-hmm. I mean, they all got a lot of tarpon in them, though. Pretty much everywhere. That's yeah. cool. I'm ready to go back. Um, we might go back in That's November. Fine. Well, we have our ribbon cutting today. Yeah. yeah. So we, we've actually got to know what we got to gotta do for this. We got, we got, we got to wrap minutes, it up. So yeah. we got to wrap this up. Uh, our official ribbon cutting is today. We're excited about that. We got a new podcast booth. We're official. I'm I'm so stoked about this space though. I know. Right? Looks I wish good. I could drink. Dope. I know. Those well, glasses look nice. Yeah. When do you when's the date? Do you have it? Yeah, have it's uh October twenty first, which is the Tennessee Alabama game. Oh perfect. Tennessee Alabama. Perfect. It's not perfect. Because that's day seventy five. Oh, I can't drink on day seventy five. Oh, so I'm gonna watch the Tennessee Alabama game. Do you have a plan for day seventy six? No, I <laughs> It's hard to say right now because, like, my wasted. mindset, <laughs> right? <laughs> drink as much as I can. Yeah. I just missed 75 days. I'm like, even up. in two weeks, I, my mindset literally has already changed. Like, I don't even know how I'm going to feel. Like, I don't even know what my mindset is. You'll probably be. feel your alcohol a lot. Literally, more. Right. guys, within I'm the- going to drink two beers and be like, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> within the last, like, two weeks, I've been getting, like, Tony Robbins quotes from Brad. Like, he's, he's it, like, wanting to go to seminars. Shit. Like, dude, yeah. 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 It is huge. You know, when, you, when you start making those disciplines, I know. I, he's wanting to buy businesses and tech going to seminars. Like you're, you're killing it, dude. Trying, man. Love I'm it. Trying. <clears throat> reading these books. I know, man. He's reading Rich Dad Poor Dad. Best. I know. Like every day, I get a book in the mail from Amazon. My wife's like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> Best introductory to business almost... book out there. By the way, it's a great Is mind. Which one? Rich Dad Poor Dad. Yeah, great I mean, mindset man. shift. Yeah. It's, it should be everybody's first book. Yeah. If you want to be an entrepreneur. If you want right. to be an entrepreneur. So that's what I started with. I'm almost done, like, probably two, three more, probably two more days, yeah. maybe three. Be I'll done be with done with Rich Dad Poor Dad. Are you reading I'm, just 10 pages a day? I'm reading you? a little more, not a lot more, but I'm I'm reading at night after the kids go to bed. Um, 
is I'm reading until I'm like super tired, which isn't much more than 10. Yeah. Usually it's like 10, 10 to 20 a day. Cool. Um, <laughs> it was funny the other night. So we put the kids to bed and I got in bed and I was sitting there reading and Kelton walks in. He was like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was, what is that? <laughs> said, oh, reading a man. book. He said, why? <laughs> <laughs> why would you do that? I mean, he, <laughs> and, and he, he's never seen me, never in his life has he seen me with a book and read. So he's like, what is happening? <laughs> well, what a great example. Man. So, I mean, people don't funny. really read books that much anymore. Everything's electronic. So, yeah. I still, I'm old school. I still want the book. In yeah. the like, I don't listen to audio. I should. I, I listen to audibles. I mean, like, there's I, nothing I, wrong with that. I just, I just like holding the book. The, when I was, like, starting 75 hard, obviously I knew the alcohol was going to be hard, and that's, like, the main thing that I wanted out of this was to go yeah. 75 days without mm-hmm. drinking. But out of the other things, I thought the reading was going to be difficult because I, I couldn't even tell you the last time I read a book. Sure. I don't even know if I ever read a book in high school. Yeah. Um. And so I was like, I don't know if I can do it. Because most of the time, like, when I would start trying to read something, I would just think about other stuff. Like, I would be reading but not listening to anything I was reading. I would just be thinking about going fishing or whatever. Yeah, right. um, but reading at night before bed has been, like, like super into it. It actually, like, calms you down and falling asleep easier. Can you watch TV? Like, are you watching TV? I'm watching TV. Oh, okay. yeah. I, I, yeah. That's not one of the rules. <laughs> no, <laughs> thankfully. <laughs> and I, I don't watch a ton of TV, but I do. I do like sports, so I yeah. watch a lot of Braves baseball right now. Braves are killing it, dude. They're they got their butts whooped last night by the Mets. I know, but, but they're still they're still yeah. killing it. Yeah. Lean the MLB. Well, we can wrap it up, guys. Yeah, yeah. we got to go. Fun. We got to go cut, one. cut some ribbons. I don't know what's up with our board, so we can't do the yeah, we, crazy our, sound our, effects. Yeah, but. or our cheesy music. Most of the people probably don't like that anyway. Yeah, so, so yeah. you're you're saved. But we will catch you on the next one. Hopefully, we'll be able to uh, get on a regular schedule. All right, and let you guys know when we're going to be here, so you can come. Well, we are going to get on a regular schedule. Yeah. We're going to try to do one a week. So yeah. it's going to be tough, but yeah. we're going to make it happen. Make it so. happen. Let's do it. Thank you, guys. See you next yeah. time. See y'all.